part three of my building the chaperone and I think you can tell I've got some things accomplished everything from the hull and its finish the deck the electrical wiring some painting some lettering so let me give you a, a brief flyover and then get into details on how I got to this point I've had to veer off the instructions a little bit and that's because I'm going to put some lighting in so I needed to know where all these walls were going to go. I put in these supports where they belong. That will give me an idea where some of these walls are going to be. Here, this wall will go here. This window here. And then this piece back here. So now that I know that, I can I can drill some holes and bring up where I want the lights to be. So that's why I had to go out of order. I have quite a bit of this black walnut, very, very thin, paper thin. And I might come in and use this instead. This puzzle piece assortment, there's no way to cover that and make it look right unless I cover over it completely. So it's just some thought. It wouldn't be that much of this walnut. So I'm giving it serious consideration. We'll see when I get there. But I think I have plenty that I could do that. I want to discuss just a little bit the building plans that come with the ship. And as you go along, there's less and less photographs and it's a lot of wording. So you have to be careful. It will kind of guide you but where it is a little difficult is gives you a part number but there's no way to really figure out on what placard those parts are this this is stage one hull construction this i've all done but there isn't really a detail as to do you go from here to here from here over to here i chose to go over he here it just makes sense and where I also have had a little bit of difficulty but I'm getting better at it is as I look this over and trying to find all the parts they're on placards and the placards are identified but for example this part number 39p it doesn't give you the placard number, so I have to look through all those placards to try and find it. So I've done something where I've organized them a little better. These were all on like a full sheet of typing paper or office paper as an example. So each one of those might have three of these. So what I've done is I've cut them out and then this particular one is LC11 and it has the part numbers for each individual part. So I've taped that on to each one of these part sheets. Now the problem is there's no numerical sequence that I can find, so I still have to look through them all. And I'm almost tempted to pop out the pieces and put them in numerical order. And if I had a big bend with, you know, 100 sections in it, I would consider doing that. For now, I'm just going to leave them on here, and the more I work with the model, the easier it is to find the individual pieces. But this has been helpful for me anyway. Although this part of the ship will not show, I still did do the tongue oil on it. I put my electrical connection right in the center. I wanted the option of going several different directions depending on where I'm going to plug it in. I think I can hide it uh, just fine from there. So here's, you will see some of this, and I, I went with the very dark, 
happy with that. So let's talk a little bit about wiring. I'm going to put five on each side towards the rear of the ship. I've got another two, four, six that will be at random places. And then I've saved a couple for the front. I may put some cargo up there or barrels and then have a lantern sitting on top of it. If I do that, it'll be a different style lantern. And what else did I want to tell you? I ran out of wire, so I've got some wire ordered. It'll come in tomorrow. So once I get that wire, then I can run all these just like I did back here. These are the LED flickering lights that I'm using. I will look this up on Amazon and provide better information. Uh, but they are yellow rated at 2 to 2.2 volts. And their choices, the lens on this one is clear. You can get one that's frosted. But this is completely clear. And from a distance, I like, again, I like the look. It looks like a kind of a flame. It comes each lamp with a resistor, but what I decided to do, and I'm not an electrician, but I'm gonna use one resistor per two lamps. And my hopes is that that will provide a little bit less electricity to dim them down just a little bit. So those of you that are electricians out there in my audience, you tell me if I'm correct or not. I've tested it, it lit up fine. So we shall see. I know, I know you can get different resistors on one of my ships. I had one resistor that would take care of like 20 lamps, but I went to an electronic store and that's the, the resistor they suggested I use instead of doing one for every lamp. That seemed to work fine. So I did this all on my own. One resistor to two lamps. You can see I've got where I've proposed to put five lanterns. It looks nice and neat up here. However, if we go under here, you can see my <laughs> wiring nightmare. I made an error and I thought I should just cut a channel and those wires would lay nicely in there. I was wrong. It's almost impossible to get them to lay in there and get the, the deck on. So what I did is drilled a hole underneath that channel for the most part. So each one of these has a channel that I'm not using and a hole that worked much better. So if you're going to do wiring, either pre-drill or drill holes all through these cross frames. Makes it a lot easier. Here's my five positive negative terminals. This is to go up to the upper decks. And then these come across the other side. With that being done, I'm going to get those wires in place and get this deck cemented in. I have all my wiring in place where I want it. I am ready to glue. It's part 35S. It's the back part of the starboard side. If I'm going to light the ship, I need to start planning for it. This is a clear straw. This is material to repair a screen in your house. And what I've done is put it around that clear straw. And then I'm thinking when I put the light inside that, cut it off, put a base on it. I'll leave the top open because if it's kerosene, uh, the flame fumes would have to go out the top. So I think that might work, and it kind of does look like a kerosene lantern. Let me, let me turn it this way. I like that look. The screen material has an adhesive. I'm not sure how well that's going to stand up, although it's for outdoors, so I would think it would stay. But I may, on the back side where it doesn't show and where the seam is, I may tack with some sort of a, a, another adhesive. To make the base for the lanterns, I took a quarter inch dowel rod, cut a 45 degree angle in it. As you can see, that's been cut. Then I turned the angle all the way around to cut another 45 degree angle to make sure that it's straight. I have this little square, and if I put that up against it and line it up, 
and that gives me the correct angle. Then it's just a matter of deciding where I want the cut, how far back. That's about right. Now I'll cut that off. Do it real slow so it doesn't get flicked off into the wilderness. And I tried to get it right about right where the edge is, and that gives me a little platform for those lanterns. You may have seen me do this before, but what I've done is just taken some painter's tape, wrapped it around in reverse, so it's actually sticky on both sides. I'm gonna use this to paint all these light supports. I think I picked this Folk Art 901 Wicker White that is a matte finish. Here they are with the first coat. Here's my prototype. So those wires will go into the wall and the light will face like that. I started out trying to airbrush these and it did not work out real well. Put too much moisture in and uh, started warping them. So I went to brush painting. These lines to maintain them right after I painted while it was still wet, I took this, I think this is a cheap uh, dental pick, but it really would not be used by a dentist. And then just ran it through those lines to clean them out. I don't mind little smudges and things because that makes it look more realistic. This may be a challenge for some of you. I painted this. The trick is to make sure that those etchings from the laser uh, machine are clear. Then get yourself a couple of very good uh, small paint brushes. And I can give you, I put my paint just on a piece of painter's tape. And I put a healthy amount on, and then, for example, what you want is to have enough paint on your brush that you're not actually brushing the edge, you're pushing the paint like a wave of paint to the edge, and it then when it gets there, just stop. So you don't need to brush the edge, you need to kind of push the paint to the edge. And that started out pretty, pretty good. To give it dimension, this back part here, I'm going to paint black. And then there's a little wedge right there. I will leave it white. One thing I forgot to mention is get yourself some sort of magnifying uh, glasses. And this happens to have a light built in. Need to replace the battery, but uh, I could not do it without them because it gives you the magnification where you can see the very edge of the line. This is the finished port side towards the rear of the ship. You can see the sign has turned out pretty well, acceptable for me. This concludes part three. And I don't often mention it, but do me a favor, hit the like button if you're following along. If you haven't subscribed, please do. So this is Boiler Dan 1, and as always, thanks for watching.